Greetings, gardeners. Let's talk tree tomatoes. Yes, uh, otherwise known in uh, New Zealand as a tamarillo. Um, in Latin, Cyphomandra bittacea. This is a true relative of the tomato, but it's in a different genus. It's a large, soft perennial uh, that produces a fruit that I guess the closest flavor to it that I can think of is tomato. But this variety is a relatively new one from New Zealand where they've been working with this fruit and it's much sweeter than the older varieties. Some of you may be familiar with the old time red variety of this that was really, really acid. Uh, this one is not. Uh, this particular fruit, when I've offered it to people here on the farm, it's come back going, oh yeah, it does taste like a tomato, but it it tastes like a guava, too. Or I've heard, yes, it's tomato-like, but wow, it's got a peach flavor. Um, this one has so much sugar in it that uh, it's almost usable in a fruit salad. Previously, the older varieties of tamarillos were uh, so acid that I could only use them maybe in a salsa or something. It was far too acid for me to eat. Now, I have heard other people tell me, oh, I love those acid ones. Well... They're out there, <laughs> but this one, uh, rather than being a red skin, is more of an orange, yellow orange. There have been reds and yellows in the past. This one's an orange, kind of a two-tone. It's got a little red around the outside of the edge. I've grown the plant probably for at least 30 years now. It, it, it works in, in uh, a fairly wide variety of climates. If you're in, say, San Francisco Bay, California area and south, any climate as mild as San Francisco and south, the plant will work as a perennial in your yard. Sometimes a little frost protection may help. In California, during extreme dry weather, I used to get problems with aphid infestations. The ants would farm aphids up the trunk. Uh, here in Hawaii, I nothing's touching it except uh, some slugs on the leaves that get close to the ground. When the leaves get close to the ground, the slugs will chew the leaves. But nobody has touched the fruit. The birds are not touching the fruit. Uh, the plant doesn't have any white flies, any scale, any aphids. I'm very happy about it. Plants that will grow here in Hawaii without any pest problems are thumbs up, as far as I'm concerned. Right over here on the nursery table, I have a really good stock of plants for this tamarillo. So if there's anybody out there who is interested, I not only have seeds on the website, but I also have the plants in the nursery currently. So we can provide it. Check these out. Right here you can see a nice group of these guys. Uh, good looking stock. Uh, nice stuff. Right here is a good look at the plant. Um, it is kind of a sprawly, large, uh, soft perennial. They live for a few years. Um, I'm uncertain exactly how long this variety will last here in Hawaii. In California, I usually manage to get three or four years out of a plant before they waste it away. Uh, it does not appear uh, to have too much trouble with nematode here because they don't seem to decline much yet. Uh, as I said, it's a relative of the tomato. It can be eaten and treated like a tomato. Here on the island, tomatoes are very difficult to grow, and so this is an excellent choice uh, as an alternative to that fruit. You can see right here that the flowers actually resemble tomato blossoms. They're definitely Solanacea. The uh, larger red variety produces the fruit in a more solitary way. Um, this particular variety tends to produce smaller fruits, but in large clumps. And so it makes really good clusters of fruit. Well, and then, of course, what you've all been waiting for, that's the taste test. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, let's see here. Okay, that's what the interior looks like. This one here seems maybe just a little bit riper. Looks kind of tomato-like on the inside, huh? 
Now the, the skin on this thing does tend to be a little bit on the tough side and so my suggestion actually is to eat it scraping it out of the skin. Mm. Oh man. Now that that is that is the best tamarillo I've ever eaten hands down. They never got any better than that. The ones I used to grow in California, boy, they were acid. Mm. Make you shudder. Mm. Very pleasing. A friend of mine who had described it as peach like. I agree. I mean it may be the color, you know that got him there, but it does have a, a, a somewhat peach-like flavor. I mean, it's tomato, okay? It's tomato for sure, but it does have a, a sweeter flavor than most tomato. I'd really have to go into like things like brandy wine or cherry tomatoes maybe before I could find that much sugar in a tomato. It's not very acid, and so it's almost sub-acid. Really good, really good. Now, either using a spoon, scrape them out of the shell. The shell's kind of tough. The skin is hard to eat, like persimmon skin, maybe, or even worse. It's hard stuff. But it, it doesn't have any of the somewhat funky taste that some solanacea occasionally have. It's pretty mellow. It's got a nice sweet flavor. Just enough acidity to be appealing and remind you of a tomato. Um, and so it's a fruit to its own class. It really is. But, you know, trying to describe how does this fruit taste. Well, if I took a peach and a tomato <laughs> and put them together, it'd probably be something like that. Um, a friend of mine also described it as guava and tomato. You know, whatever. Uh, the texture, I guess, is a little bit like guava flesh, something like that, kind of fairly dense, creamy. It's not as wet and squirty as a tomato. Uh, it does have gel in the middle, as you saw, like a tomato does, and so that's similar. And there is a somewhat tomato-like taste. The, the, the fruit, I'm sure, could be used in any way that you would use a tomato. I've got a lot of them at the moment. Crops coming in. I'm considering putting them through a food mill. Um, that way we can just like cook them all, put them in. It'll strain out the seeds, strain out the skins. I'll get the pulp, and then the pulp can be used. That I was planning to make either salsa or tomato sauce. Uh, maybe a spaghetti sauce with this that would make a good spaghetti sauce. Um, if it wasn't red enough for you, well, you can add a beet, <laughs> you know. But I've had orange tomato spaghetti sauce before and found it quite attractive, and I think this could be too. Um, really a good fruit. Uh, it is known, this is not a very rare fruit, I think most of us have heard of the tree tomato, um, and people in areas where it thrives have probably grown them. But I've always been kind of disappointed with the plant. I didn't think that much of it until I got a hold of this variety. This one's special. Absolutely. Aloha. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.